A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen As salatu salam as Sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi wa sabbihi wa ilahi wa middin Ashadu in la ilaha illallah Waqtahu la sharika Allah Lahu muk wa lahu hamd Wa huwa alikuli shayin kadir Wa ashadu anna Sayyidina Muhammadin abduhu rasulu Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Truly all praises be to Allah Under all situations and all circumstances I am Hanafi Abdul Malik The Imam of this masjid, the Muslim house I bear witness openly In this masjid Publicly in the streets Publicly downtown in the malls Or privately that there is absolutely nothing to be worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Waqtahu la sharika la. He is by himself. He has no partners, nor he has any associates. To him belong the right of sovereignty over everything that's in the heavens and everything that's on the earth. And whatever between the heavens and beneath the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the malik or the king, and he has sovereignty over it. Again, to him belong all praises. And he does whatever he pleases, whether you understand it, like it, dislike it, it's irrelevant. And I bear witness Muhammad ibn Abdullah, and I always make it clear concerning the people we talk to, that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, is a khatim, the seal of the ambiyat. There is no new prophet or new messenger come after him. May Allah send his eternal peace Blessings upon him, his family, his sahabas, and the Ansar, and those who follow him until the day of judgment. I mean. Again, Alhamdulillah, meaning all praises be to Allah. And if thinking, and I could expound upon this one simple thing very, very briefly, is that regardless of the condition <clears throat> that we find ourselves in, whether we perceive it as to be something good or something bad, if you're a Muslim, it's alhamdulillah. Truly, truly, alhamdulillah, under all situations and all circumstances. Again, thinking about this statement and the power of this statement, and as being a hadith, I can take this whole tip on talking about it. I, I like to praise Allah in saying, all praises be to Him regardless of the condition. Whether we're here in the Muslim house or we at the Haram in Mecca, it's alhamdulillah. If we are here in, in Michigan and America enjoying the choicest and softest life, or we in the Middle East and the, our homes are being destroyed, our families are being uh, misused and abused, it's still alhamdulillah. Because if you believe in Allah and your faith is in Allah, for every inconvenience, for every hurt, Allah will give you something better for it. So we say alhamdulillah under all situations and all circumstances. And we thank Allah for this particular place that we have that Allah gave us here in Flint, Michigan, the Muslim house. And introducing you to this place, uh, we found the Muslim house in 1996. Uh, Some say 95, but it was 96 when we actually incorporated. And coming here to Flint, Michigan, and accepting Islam in Flint, coming from Oklahoma, that is my wife and I, we were born and raised in uh, Oklahoma uh, as non-Muslims, as Christians. And so Allah blessed us to have an understanding of Islam to the point that we come to Michigan looking for Islam here in Michigan. After coming through uh, the nation of Islam and we saw that that wasn't Islam and coming through a couple other little minor things, we don't want to elaborate too long on that, but Allah had blessed us to come to the Sunnah of Rasulullah, the application of Islam according to what Allah had given to His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In coming to Islam and trying to practice Islam and having the love for our community, we wanted the other people around us, around us, to have Islam and enjoy Islam and see the benefit of Islam, like we were benefiting from it. We had people from the Middle East coming here to Flint, uh, doctors and professional people who has a, wasn't 
uh, organizing their practice in, in their profession. And for the most part, we'll meet it in our homes. And after a few years, the community began to uh, divide basically on economic, uh, economic lines. So we here in Flint, the indigenous Muslims, wanted a place that was conducive and easy for the people inside the city to, you know, to have access to. We wanted to sell out five times a day. We wanted to, the community, the general community, the Flint community itself, to have access to the masjid, uh, where be sent, the masjid be centrally located. We uh, put the masjid intentionally here in <coughs> downtown uh, in Martin Luther King and uh, Fifth Avenue for the uh, accessibility for everybody to come here. It's close to the Hurley Hospital. We figured if the doctor wanted to come in, he could almost walk here to the hospital, walk from the hospital to this place. Uh, we had uh, the people on the bus line who were from the, uh, the project area, the poor people, they could ride the bus to, the, to this place. All the people living in the community, they could walk to the place. So we chose this place, you know, strategically for its central location and the accessibility of everyone in the city of Flint. Again, thinking about the benefit of the community because we want everyone to, uh, to uh, enjoy Islam and see Islam as we see it. So after we found this place, uh, we bought it from the place called the, uh, the uh, Transition House for about $4,000. It, it had uh, only a roof on it, completely burned out, uh, no water, no electricity, nothing, zero, nada. Middle of, winter, middle of the winter, uh, we had propane heaters. We made would do out on the front porch. <laughs> Those days, ice cold water, truly ice cold water. Uh, making salat downstairs uh, in the sister's room that we have the sister's room now. Again, no walls. We had sheets for walls. But Allah have blessed us, and we said, Alhamdulillah, from the very first Ramadan that we prayed in this masjid, we had a hafiz in the masjid, we had the Quran read in the very first Ramadan in this place here with no walls. And from that time up to this very, very day through Ramadan, we had the hafiz in the masjid and we had uh, the complete Quran read to us every year. Although we had people here who are, are not Arabs, uh, mainly indigenous brothers, uh, young people, poor people, uh, didn't know Ali from Ba, uh, didn't know Ta from Ha, didn't know anything about Arabic. But again, we had this this sentiment and this love for our community and we try to give good examples in this community via the Muslim house for the benefit of the whole community. Uh, our basic dream was that we want to have a masjid here in Flint at the Muslim house in particular. We, it would, we have so many people it would force the community itself to build a masjid. Our anticipation, our dream was once the people start coming to, the, uh, to Islam there would be so many people here, the mosque would be too small to accommodate the people, therefore would be forced to have a bigger mosque here. Trying to get the property here that's around us, uh, the property that was around, that's around us still vacant now, at the time we come here, we could have bought this complete block for $65,000. And it's, it's ridiculous. But again, only a dream for, the, for us, we only, we're the only people who uh, shared in that dream. And so, it never materialized. But again, we wanted this building, or a building, for everyone. We wanted it for the Muslim and the non-Muslims. We wanted the Muslim house or the masjid here in the city of Flint to be as big as any masjid that we see on the highways or in the suburbs, you know, to be a functional masjid for everybody. We wanted the people in the community, Muslims and non-Muslims, to have access to the Quran, to the history of Islam, to the complete Islamic madrasa. We wanted the doctors <clears throat> that was here in the city to uh, put on medical clinics extending from the masjid and helping the community. We wanted uh, the buildings that's across the street which are still vacant. We wanted the barber shops, uh, beauty shops. We wanted uh, restaurants, halal markets, uh, apartment complexes. And then, again, people think we're dreaming, but these are things that the Muslims have done outside of Islam, but they could have, could have done these things inside of Islam, and it would have been a feather in the cap of the Muslims in Flint. Uh, if I can back up a little bit, if we could look at the history of Flint. When, when we came to Flint in 68, uh, Flint was the second largest city in Michigan. It was, 
people were working at General Motors, uh, mainly through Fisher Body, Fisher One, Turnstead, all, all kind of General Motors plants. You could leave one shop and go to another shop the very next day if you choose to, and you'll be hired. So there's almost zero unemployment. But through the years and through the deterioration of, of General Motors and the auto industry, you know, Flint has arrived to where it's at now, and it says, if not the worst, close to the worst city for its crime in America. In America. And we know that the only thing that can change this situation or change this around is Islam. Flint is not suffering because of the economic uh, desperation we find ourselves in. We think Flint is suffering because of the moral decadence. And the only moral application or the only moral social change that will change this situation is Islam. We, we uh, again, we're not dreaming. We're not idealists. We're very, very practical in the sense that we don't have some concept of Islam or some ideal of Islam or think of Islam as some philosophical view. We look at Islam as something that has been firmly established in the earth. The history of Islam is proven. It's not a conjecture. It's the system that God has given us, Allah has given us, as to how to change social environments from the time of Rasulullah and Islam up until this very day. All throughout the history of Islam, we see that wherever Islam went, in situations like Flint, if not worse than Flint, every case, in every case, in the 1400 year history, Islam has changed that situation. It's always changed it. So we don't want to, again, be idealists or philosophers or someone with conjecture to think that Islam may work. We know Islam will work. Again, the social problems, the, the moral problems, whatever problem we have in Flint, Islam is the answer. And we know that if we had an Islamic center that's centrally located in the city of this, in the center of this city, it would be an, uh, an edifice, it would be a dream, it would be a uh, uh, I guess for lack of a better term, it would be an inspiration to the, to the poor community. If we had, and I say inshallah, if we had the masjids like the Toledo Masjid, the Cincinnati Masjid, the masjids we look and see this outside of the city, and to us they have no practical purposes for the people in Toledo, in Cincinnati, you know, in these cities. We need the masjids and these edifices inside the city like the masjid that was in Medina during the time of Rasulullah. We, we believe that Islam is the only thing that will stop the problems or solve the problems that we're suffering from. Other than Islam, we're like any other people. Other than Islam, we have the same results as all other systems uh, have in their community. So again, we believe that Islam is the only answer, Islam is the only solution to our problems. I'll close on this. If we stop and think about the social problems that we have, not only in Flint, but anywhere, the basic reason for that problem is because of we're doing something opposite to Allah's decree. In most cases, if we stop and look at a problem that we have as a community, or as a family, or as an individual, that problem comes from going against the decree of Allah. Stop and think about it. You know, because again, everything Allah has given us, is, he, he guides us to the good. Everything He has given us, it takes us to the good. And the only time we have the bad is we do opposite to the good. So if we stop and analyze again uh, our situation here in Flint or any other place, uh, uh, in, in America, in the world, it's because we don't follow Allah. We don't follow what His Prophet have, have exemplified before us. That's the problem. So we're calling people to the simple fact that La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Not in theory, not, in, not as an ideal, but as, as fact, as a, a tra uh, tradition that's been proven throughout the history of mankind. Whenever we follow Allah, we get the good. Whenever we go against Allah, we get the opposite of that. Again, alhamdulillah bil alameen. I hope this is sufficient. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.